hello and welcome to worship today. No matter where you are or what you're doing, you are welcome here. A few announcements for today. Um, uh, Ash Wednesday is this coming Wednesday, February 17th. So that will be an online service available on um, our website, Facebook, and our YouTube pages. And we have ashes in individual containers that you can pick up. They'll be outside uh, the door by the office um, for you to pick up anytime before uh, our service is on Wednesday. We will also be doing uh, midweek ecumenical Lenten services with our ecumenical partners in town. Um, so those will be broadcast live at 7 p.m. on Facebook every Wednesday. So I hope that you'll join us uh, for these, this Lenten midweek service that we're doing together. And a happy St. Valentine's Day uh, to you all. <laughs> um, as many of you probably know, um, my mom taught at a Catholic school when I was growing up, and so she had a video that I watched like every year about the history of St. Valentine and why we celebrate St. Valentine's Day. Uh, so St. Valentine was a Christian who lived in probably the early 300s-ish in the Roman Empire. Um, and the story goes that he married people in secret when the Roman government, uh, to help with their military recruitment, did not allow soldiers to get married. Valentine would marry them in secret. And when he was arrested eventually for this behavior, um, he befriended his jailer's daughter who was blind. Um, and the story goes that he healed her of her blindness. He performed a miracle, and before he was led away to be killed, because um, he was a martyr, he uh, left a note for the jailer's daughter and signed it, Your Valentine. So that's just a little history of, of who St. Valentine was and who it is that we're celebrating today with roses and chocolates and all of those good things. Let us take a moment for silent reflection before we begin with our service today. Near in this place, the new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. We in this space, our fears and our dreamings, brought here to you in the light of the day. Gather us in, the lost and forsaken, gather us in, the blind and the lame. Call to us now, and we shall awaken, we shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout the world history, called to be like to the whole human the haughty, gather us in, the proud and the strong, give us a heart so meek and so lonely, give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water, here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters, call us the new to be soft for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion, give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in so heaven light years away. Here in this place the new light is shining, now is the kingdom and 
upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all that we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading is from 2 Kings chapter 2. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elijah were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elijah, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elijah said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elijah and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elijah, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elijah and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elijah, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elijah said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, 
A chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elijah kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Our gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up high a mountain, up a high mountain apart by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy is yours in the triune God. Amen. We don't talk about Elijah that much. He was arguably the greatest prophet in the history of Israel, and his story is told in the book of Kings. But the story today isn't really about Elijah anyway. Sure, he's the one that gets taken up to heaven in a chariot of fire, but the story is really about his friend, his disciple and mentee, Elisha. Elisha knows what's about to happen, and when others try to tell him, his response is less than gracious. But Elisha refuses to be left behind, even though it might be easier for him if he was. Elisha is going to stick with Elijah until the very end. And Elisha gets to see the glory of God coming out of the heavens with a chariot and horses of fire, with a whirlwind, whirlwind that takes Elijah from him. And Elisha's response to seeing this miraculous act of God is grief. Elisha knew this was a point of no return. He was stepping into a new world without a lot of certainties or guarantees. So Elisha tears his clothes in an ancient sign of mourning and grief. It is only after he has felt all of his feelings that he is able to get back up and go into town, stepping forward into whatever future God has planned for him. When Jesus appears transformed in front of his disciples, standing with Elijah and Moses, the two most important figures in Jewish history, the disciples are not overjoyed. They're terrified. Just before this scene of Jesus in all of his glory, Jesus told them he would have to suffer and die. The Jesus they thought they knew is suddenly completely changed. And the path that lies ahead of him upends everything the disciples think that they know and understand about Jesus. Their world has just turned upside down, much like Elisha's. We all know what it feels like to have our world completely change in an instant, unsure of what will come next or what the future could look like. To stand at the threshold knowing you cannot go back, but terrified to move forward. That is what the disciples and Elisha experience in today's stories. In those moments, those tipping points of no return, we are not alone. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, past, present, and future. 
We know that Jesus also stood at that threshold, wishing it could be different. In the Garden of Gethsemane at night, Jesus asked God the Creator to let this cup pass from him. So many of us have been taught to not experience fear or sadness or anxiety, that we're supposed to manage other people's emotions and not have any ourselves. Or that showing any emotion at all is weakness and must be avoided at all costs. So we keep it all inside of ourselves, swirling around in our hearts and our guts, fogging over the other parts of ourselves. We've internalized messages of how we're supposed to feel and act as though we are automatons going through the motions of life. But our feelings and emotions are an integral part of us, a God-given part of us. God is not embarrassed by our tears or sobs that are wrenched out of our chest. God does not think that we are being extra for being excited or deeply angered. This Wednesday, we enter the season of Lent, a season of reflection and repentance, a season that strips away the layers of armor and numbing we use to protect ourselves from feeling too deeply and from judgment. Lent is an invitation to look within us and acknowledge what has been hidden and covered over, even from ourselves. This Lenten journey can be uncomfortable and raw. But we do not go through this journey alone. Elisha got up and went into town, surrounded by God and the community around him. The disciples still had time with Jesus to cherish and wonder. So may we feel and remember the God who wept over his friend Lazarus and who turned over tables in the temple in anger as we journey together into a new future. Amen. Together, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he, he, <clears throat> he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of intercession. On this last Sunday after Epiphany, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need, responding to each petition with the phrase, Alleluia. Amen. O oh God of light, we pray for communities of faith around the globe, for our own congregation, and for all Christians who cannot gather for communal worship. Show us your face in the darkness. Spread your word of power to all the faithful. Hear our prayer, O God. Alleluia. Amen. O morning star, we pray for the earth, for life forming in the dark earth and ocean depths, for creatures seen and unseen, and especially for the animals who require cold and ice. Give us your spirit's guidance in our stewardship of the planet. Hear our prayer, O God. Alleluia. Amen. O oh, Son of Righteousness, we pray for our nation's elected leaders, for attorneys and juries, and for all who work for justice in our land. Give to them all integrity and service and courage to choose what is right. We pray for our citizenry, that prejudice cease, that resentment wane, and that violence be averted. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Alleluia. Amen. Beautiful Savior, we pray for all who suffer from COVID-19, for medical workers, and for all who await the vaccine. We pray for those enduring famine, for those experiencing homelessness, for the people of Yemen, 
and for all who live in war zones. We pray for all who are ill, for all who receive no medical care, and for those we name here before you, especially Ralph Avi. Heal them with your loving might. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Amen. Alleluia. Love divine, we pray for those who especially on this Valentine's Day feel lonely, for those who are abandoned, and for those who must live apart from their dear ones, especially for the children separated from their parents at our nation's border. Embrace all who are alone with your care. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Alleluia. Amen. O Holy Trinity, Light Creator, Light of Light Begotten, and Light Revealer, receive our praise and hear our prayers for the sake of the one who dwells among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Thanks be to God.